Hi friends. Let's understand the dynamic characteristics of the instrument and measurement systems in this video. We know the difference between static and dynamic characteristics. St static characteristics are independent of time. The characteristics which do not change over a period of time or with respect to time, whereas dynamic characteristics are the characteristics that change with the change in the input signal over a period of time. So the important characteristics that we need to understand are dynamic error, fidelity, speed of response, and the lag, uh, what we you know. So let's uh, get back to that. We have already seen this. The dynamic characteristics also, there are desirable and undesirable characteristics. The desirable characteristics are the speed of response should be high, the fidelity, which is the faithfulness of the reproducing capability of the output signal with the change in the input signal. So fidelity should be high, speed of response should be high, whereas the undesirable characteristics are dynamic error should be low and the lag should be low. Let's understand what are these parameters. So for the definition sake, dynamic error is the difference between the true value of the measured quantity to the value shown by the measuring instrument under varying conditions. We'll try to understand it with a graph. Then the speed of response is defined as the rapidity of the measurement system that responds to the changes in the measuring variable. So this speed of response basically indicates how active and fast the system is. When fidelity is the faithfulness, faithful reproducibility, faithful, it is defined as the degree to which a measuring instrument is capable of faithfully reproducing the changes in input without any dynamic error. So um, that's exactly what we know in the world. Fidelity is famous with Wi-Fi, wireless fidelity. How the uh, it, how it reproduces faithfully the changes in the input uh, without any dynamic error. That's what is the fidelity. Then the lag. Every system takes at least some time to respond. Whatever the, the time lag, uh, maybe to the changes in the measured variable. So if you take for example, lag occurs in temperature measurement by temperature sensors such as thermocouple or RTD or dial thermometer due to scale formation on thermo well due to the process liquid. Let's understand this with this diagram. So we have a y-axis percentage output change. Then on x-axis, we have change. We have time. And then whatever the input that you are, let's say if you are giving a step input of 100 degrees centigrade, uh, or th that means there is a percent, total 100% output change here. That's exactly what it is coming here. So we expect the output to settle down somewhere here. But for this input of step input, step input example is we'll try to understand the step ramp and sinusoidal input while studying the order of the instruments. But for now, all that you need to understand is step input is nothing but if you have a bucket of hot water already and if you are inserting the thermometer directly, immediately, instantaneously into that, that means you are giving a step input instantaneously at 100 degrees centigrade to the thermometer. So this is the input signal that you are giving here. But how the instrument responds? So the output responds like this sometimes, like how the curve is showing. It goes here, then again uh, comes down, again goes up. And so beyond this 100% change of output, it overshoots to the period, then again come. So this is what we normally call it as a difference between two peaks. We normally call it as a period. So the overshoot and undershoot beyond this maximum point you know, goes on reducing and it settles down over a period of time. And this should be around plus or minus 2% band of is given for the settling time. So this entire thing, time, we normally call it as a 2% settling time. That means the time required for the instrument output to settle down for a given input value. The input value is 100, 100 degrees centigrade. That is 100% output change. And that is exactly what we eat. So this is the, uh, uh, once it reaches here, up to this, there is a linear range. Then there is an only, this is a final steady state level. Then it goes here. Okay. So the, for the linearity range, it takes maximum 10 to 90% rise time for it. So that's how we understand this curve. Let's understand with some other uh, thing. Uh, let's say, uh, how do we understand the dynamic error and dynamic lag? time lag. So briefly, you see, so this is the input that uh, input signal that we are giving. Input signal, how we are giving is with the change, temperature is changed over a period of time. Okay, so uh, at uh, five degrees, at five minutes, the temperature is say 10 degrees. After 10 minutes, 
where the temperature is 20. After 30 minutes, the temperature is 40. After 40, after, uh, 40 minutes, the temperature is 50 degrees, something like that. So this, this is the input signal, uh, the input temperature, we normally call it. But for this, how the instrument is responding, the instrument output temperature is responding like this. This is where you have to be very, very careful. Okay, so this is the input signal, how it is, how the temperature is varying with time. And this is the output signal, how the output is, output temperature is varying over a period of time. Then it attains the steady state value and goes something like that. Now for us to understand the change in the output, that is T2 minus T1 is the dynamic error at time T2. And the same thing, if you see at time T1, what is the dynamic error? This is say T1 minus somewhere here T0 if you have. So T1 minus T0 is the dynamic error. So the change in the vertical scale gives the dynamic error, whereas the change in the horizontal scale gives us the dynamic lag. You just try to understand the dynamic error is always with respect to at, at certain temperature. The dynamic error uh, is at time T2. Maximum dynamic error is there at time T2. Okay. And maximum lag is there at temperature T1. So the lag is always with reference to the output value, whereas the dynamic error is always with respect to the time or the uh, time. At what time there is a maximum dynamic error so that you can always uh, under, uh, understand the characteristics of the control while designing the control system. Then the speed of response is the speed at which, uh, you know, the time required for the output to attain a specified usually 90%, plus or minus 90% of the steady state value or the final value. So let's say this may be the uh, steady state value which is reaching, but so it within 90% of the steady state value is reached, reached here, okay. And slew time, there is another is maximum rate of change that can be handled by the system. That let's not worry about it. Then the time constant is very, very important. This we will be seeing while studying the order of the system time constant is the time required for the output of a first order system to attain 63.2 percent of its final value when subjected to a step input so you are giving a step input like this suddenly after this time and then the instrument responds over a period of time so for the time to respond 63.2 percent of the final value that's what we normally call it as a time constant. So the normally the instrument will be reaching the steady state value after two or three or four or five time constant. So that is the reason why we are always asked not to take the output immediately giving the input signal. You have to wait for some time to account for dynamic errors, dynamic lags and for the minimum time constant for it to reach the steady state value. That's very, very important. Then you have fidelity. Uh, fidelity is normally the faithful, uh, faithfulness. Uh, so it is the system's ability to represent faithfully the information in the measured value. Okay, fidelity is also defined in terms of amplitude response, frequency response, phase response. Okay, so if you study the amplitude response, you have output by input uh, is the amplitude ratio here. Then you have input on x-axis. If you see the graph, what it is the ability of the system to treat all input amplitudes equally and uniformly. Practically, it may not be possible. So it is desired that over a specified range of input amplitudes, the ratio of output amplitude to input amplitude should remain constant. So this is exactly what we normally call it as a amplitude response. So for a given period of amplitude, input amplitude, the ratio of output input amplitudes remains constant. This is what we normally call it as amplitude response. So if you see the frequency response, your frequency is on the uh, x-axis. Output to input ratio is on the y-axis. So it is the ability of the system to treat inputs of all frequencies equally and uniformly. Again, practically it is desired that the ratio of output to input amplitudes should remain constant over some desired frequency range. So for this frequency range, the ratio of output to input remains constant. That is exactly what we call it as a frequency response. So most commonly we'll be understanding the dynamic characteristics of the instrument or the control system 
with the frequency response. Okay. So phase response, of course, it is not that much important, but still it is the ability of the system to treat inputs of all frequencies uniformly in terms of causing time delay or causing drift or shift time-wise. Okay. So over a period of time, let's say this is step input to the system and the output, if you see uh, for the time, it is always coming and then settling down. It is the ability of the system to treat the inputs of all frequencies uniformly in terms of causing time delay. And this is for the rise time. And this is the time delay for which the instrument output to respond. Then final uh, review, if you see, uh, once you plot the output to input with respect to time, uh, if you plot the, if you have an input temperature like this, output temperature like this, so the T2 minus T1 is the dynamic error at, at, at time T2. And it, small t2 minus t1 is the time lag, a dynamic time lag at temperature t1. This is how we have to understand the dynamic characteristics of the instrument. So thank you very much for your time. And want to watch more related video, please log on to this channel.